I'm Normand Latourelle, the artistic director and founder of Cavalia and Odysseo. We are in the stable of Odysseo in Toronto. Where did the vision for combining horses, acrobats and music come from? So one day I created a show uh, back in Quebec and uh, I just needed one horse as an extra. I realized when the horse was coming on stage, he was stealing focus from the 100 per 20 performer that we dressed and we make up and you know we try to stage them but the horse was just walking and I just realized he was a star without makeup without nothing he was just coming and people just enjoy the presence of the horse so that attracted my attention actually this show went on for nine years the second year um, I bought six horses I called some of my friends who were acrobats I found a guy who was a stunt man uh, in, in movie and um, he, we tried to see what were horses. I was not people, somebody who, know, who knew horses. And from that, slowly, it became Cavalia. And it took about 10 years before, I mean, from that moment to the first show. So it was a long process. How does Cavalia compare with your work on Cirque du Soleil? I didn't want to be Cavalia to be a me too, a, a, circus, cir a second Cirque du Soleil. I wanted to be to has his own personality, and that's what I like to do. When we started Cirque du Soleil, what what my, our challenge at that time was to let's reinvent the circus, let's do something that nobody can see anywhere else in the world. So that's always been my challenge on life as a creator, and that's I think what we have achieved with the first Cavalier show. And moving to Odysseo again, it's. You, you, you will not recognize a Cavalia in Odysseo. Uh, you will understand the philosophy of you know, well-being of the horse and all that. You understand that, but that's it. Uh, other than that, the, the performing, the performance itself is just mind-blowing. It's just so different, and that's what I like. I can, I can tell today because I see the reaction of the public, and I think we have achieved something grandiose. Well, the biggest challenge of the job is really to get everybody working together. Uh, the team here at Odyssey was huge, so 200 people working around the clock uh, during the move to build the, um, to build the big top, to build the site, to build the bleachers, to build the stage you see behind me. And it's really to get everybody working together to deliver the show for opening night. What things have you tried before that you've been surprised with the results? Well, to be honest, one of the original um, uh, dreams in the creation was to fill the stage full of water. Um, and it was really one of those, is this something we can do? We don't know if it's going to work. We did hours and hours of testing. And uh, quite fortunately, the, uh, what we call the bassin in the show, or in the final number when we flood the stage with 80,000 gallons of water, works beautifully. It was all just an idea, and it comes out perfect in the last number, and it makes the last number of the show unbelievable. How many different types of horses do you have here? How many different types of breeds? Yeah, we have 11 breeds of horses in the stables here today and, um, and 13 breeds of humans, 13 nationalities of humans, 7 different languages and 11 breeds of horses coming from all over the world. So uh, some horses, you see some grey horses there in the stable coming from Spain, from Portugal, there is some German horses, some Belgian horses, American, Canadian, Arabians, so, you know, horses coming from from all over the world, yeah. So do you find one breed suited for a certain aspect of the show or are all the horses inter trained interdisciplinely? Um, my way of training is really to bring the horses to be able to do many different things. In this way, a, a day of training to be able to perform will not be all the time the same. Mm -hmm. If you're doing all the time the same thing uh, as a human, mm -hmm. you will be bored about it, okay? So my way of training is to say, okay, you normally a dressage horse for your body and your way of moving, mm -hmm. but how will you bring you to become a trick riding, to do liberty, to do a little jumping, to do many different things. And then what will be and the numbers of games that we are able to share, the number of disciplines that we are going to be able to play in together is so big that your program of training will never be boring. So I will be, I will be changing and changing and changing and changing and then the culture, the body culture for the horses because they are not pulling all the time on the same muscles, because we are not doing all the time the same exercise. And also um, the possibility to be able to interchange and back up some horses and some guys into the show 
because we have a feeling a horse is not comfortable in something or somebody is not comfortable so we can you know have somebody else doing some you know and we can yeah. interchange <laughs> sometime in the show and that's fantastic Well, my name is uh, Majeli Nado. I'm from Montreal. I'm 25 years old and I'm an acrobat and a rider in Odiseo. This is Brennan. He's uh, getting um, a warm up on the hoop. We have one act with nine hoop in the show. And he's doing the solo in the act. So now he's just getting a little warm up to be and practice, so to be ready for the show tonight. What is the difference between being an acrobat and a rider? Uh, it's a really big difference because as an acrobatic, um, you train with rope, with on the ground, in the air, but it's it's uh, all object. It's not the horses, the, they are moving around, they're not predictable. You have to go with the flow, go with their attitude, you have to do the number, but like human, they have their good day and bad days, so you have to be able to deal with everything. Sometimes they're nervous, like us, we can be nervous, sometimes they're it's every day is different. Do you all feel like a big family? Yeah, well, like in every family that's good and bad moments, but yes, we are. Like it's we have to if we want to keep that that show group and to keep that energy that we have, we have to be we have to be tight. We have to be trusting each other. We have to to feel good working with everyone because if you have one person that you're angry at, then it's going to affect everyone, so you really need to be, to be in, in good terms with everyone and be happy of what you're doing. Mm -hmm.